What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be talking about something that is critical to success in your passive income journey, an investment strategy. As with anything, having a game plan is important if you want to succeed in achieving your goals. Everyone is in a different position and on a different path in life, and your journey will depend on your income, risk tolerance, goals, and timeline. Although we all have unique situations, understanding the fundamentals of investment opportunities and having the tools to plan accordingly can unlock a solid path for you in achieving the passive income you need to give yourself the ultimate financial freedom you've dreamed of. Having an investment strategy is especially important in a bear market, but it's something you should have regardless of the condition of the markets and economy overall. This is part one of a series of videos that I'll be putting out on investment strategy. The series will cover risk and rewards, how I evaluate projects, how I plan my investments, how I track my investments, and more. In this video, I'll be explaining different levels of risk and reward and showing you what I think about balancing the two within my investment portfolio. I'll be focusing on crypto specifically, but these principles can be applied to any type of investment. And by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of the relationship between risk and reward and why they play a critical role in formulating your very own investment strategy. Before we get down to business, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Summer and I'd like to welcome you to Fire Hustle, where it's my mission to tell you everything you need to know about crypto and investing in the shortest amount of time possible. If you want to help this video reach a wider audience, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you can take advantage of all the work I've done. It really helps the channel and I would also really appreciate it. And remember, investing can be very risky and none of this is financial advice. My videos are a great starting point, but I definitely recommend you continue to research and learn as much as you can if you're new to investing and as I always say if you're just starting out you should only invest what you're willing to lose now let's jump right into it first I'll be talking about different levels of risk when it comes to investing when learning about an investment opportunity we're always laser focused on the rewards but it's critical that you give the same level of attention if not more to the level of risk involved Typically, opportunities with high risk should give you a higher potential reward and vice versa. But what is risk? I personally define risk as the likelihood that I'll end up in a net negative investment position compared to my general expectation. If we want to get official, investment risk can be defined as the probability of occurrence of the losses relative to the expected return on any particular investment. It's a measure of the level of uncertainty of achieving the returns as per the expectations of the investor. Let's take a look at a few examples. Most of the major crypto exchanges out there like Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, and many others give you the ability to earn passive income by staking blue chip cryptocurrencies. You can make between 4 to 7% staking Ethereum, 5% staking Avalanche, and more. Since these major exchanges are highly regulated and secure, there's a very high chance that you'll get your expected return, not to mention that these exchanges have a solid track record. Now going back to my personal definition of risk, there's a very low likelihood that I'll end up in a net negative position compared to what I expect. Therefore, I would say these opportunities have a low level of risk. There is of course the risk of price volatility, and I would say that if you're bullish on crypto as a whole, then you have more faith in the success of these blue chips. With staking blue chip cryptocurrencies, I'm mainly concerned with accumulating more of the token itself with less importance put on the price because I expect it to increase in the long run, meaning everything I've accumulated is going to be worth more than it is today. Now, let's look at an example on the opposite side of the spectrum. There are several auto staking and auto compounding projects out there, including Titano, Sphere, and Seifu, just to name a few. They were quite popular and promised ridiculously high APYs between 99,000% and a whopping 383%. This means that if you buy $1 worth of these tokens today, after one year, you'll have over $100,000. However, these projects rely on new investments and transactions to fuel rewards and have been around for much less than a year and their token prices have been extremely volatile. In order to achieve your expected return, the projects have to keep growing and the price of their tokens have to stay the same or increase and they have to sustain this for either an entire year or longer. Now, all of this is possible, but there's a very low chance of success considering the economics of the project and the fact that all of these business models are new and haven't been proven. Going back to my personal definition of risk, there is a very high likelihood that I'll end up in a net negative position compared to what I expect, Therefore, I would say that these projects have a high level of risk. If you look at the price chart for any of these, you'll see that they're deep in the red. So why would anybody invest in high-risk projects? 
because the potential rewards generally match the level of risk. Projects like this can give you an incredibly high return, whereas your earning potential with staking top cryptocurrencies is limited. And I just wanna be clear that I'm not saying that you should invest in these, I'm just using them as an example of projects that I would deem as high risk. All of the degen projects that we love or hate fall into the category of high risk. Now, when it comes to actually evaluating an investment opportunity and the associated risk and reward is definitely both an art and a science. I won't be covering how I evaluate projects in this video, but stay tuned as that'll be the topic of the second video in the series. Now, back to talking about risk and reward. This line graph represents how I think of risk and reward. As your risk increases, so should your potential for reward. This is also known as the risk return spectrum in traditional finance, but can be applied to any type of investment. In general, you should be able to place investment opportunities somewhere along this line and your assessment might even change over time if let's say there's new information that either increases or decreases the risk or reward of the investment. You might even come across opportunities where things aren't as balanced. For example, maybe you come across an opportunity with low risk and high reward. You may decide to jump on it, but on the flip side, if you ever come across an opportunity with low reward but very high risk, you may choose to avoid it at all costs. There's no magic formula to determining the balance of the risk and reward for a project, but but you can generally bucket things into high, medium, and low risk. Now, let's talk about how to incorporate this in your investment strategy. We always hear that having a diversified investment portfolio is the way to go, mainly meaning you should invest in different projects and asset classes, but it's also important that you diversify across the different levels of risk as well. And this should be based on your own personal risk tolerance. But what is risk tolerance? I personally define risk tolerance as how much risk I'm willing to take and how much risk I can afford to take. If you're having a hard time figuring out your own risk tolerance, you can ask yourself a few questions like, what's my timeline when it comes to investments? Am I planning on using my portfolio and returns for retirement or for something else like purchasing a car or a home? How much money do I have available to invest? How much of it am I willing to lose? And do I plan to stay invested through a market decline like we're currently facing? The answer to these questions and more can help you understand your risk capacity. Your risk capacity is your ability to have something bad happen in your portfolio and your goal is not be ruined because you'll still have time to recover and also about willingness to take on market volatility and stay invested. You'll also be able to assess your attitude towards risk. Do you wake up every day ready to eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and dessert? Or are you just running for the hills at the first sight of risk? Once you've taken some time to think about what your risk tolerance is, you can put some numbers to it so that you can start to formulate a more concrete and quantitative investment strategy. For example, someone that has a high tolerance for risk might go with a 20% low risk, 30% medium risk, and 50% high risk investment. On the other hand, someone that has a low tolerance for risk might go with 70% low risk, 20% medium risk, and 10% high risk investment. These percentages are completely flexible and should be customized to you. You'll also probably change over time as our risk tolerance changes as we go through different events or milestones in life. I also highly recommend holding a certain portion of your investment portfolio in cash so that you always have funds available for any good opportunities or plays that come up. Now let's walk through an example of how an investor may incorporate risk when starting to build out their investment strategy. If I make $5,000 per month from my full-time job and I'm able to cover all of my expenses, including putting some money aside for a rainy day fund with $3,000, then that means I have $2,000 left over to put into my investment portfolio each and every month. Of course, this situation is an example and is not a true representation of what someone's expenses may be as everyone's situation is different. I'm super bullish on crypto, so I'm okay with sticking it out through the ups and downs and plan on constantly contributing to my portfolio through any type of market. I'm okay with taking on some big risks, but I also wanna make sure my portfolio has a strong chance of growing over time. And I've decided that I wanna put a small piece of my portfolio into extremely risky DGEN plays because one of them might just pay off and the gains from one solid play could outweigh the losses from the rest. Based on all of this, I consider myself to have a medium to high tolerance for risk. What this might look like if I put some rough numbers to it is that I like to split my investments as 30% low risk, 30% medium risk, 30% high risk, and 10% very high risk investments. If I'm allocating my $2,000 monthly investment and plan on holding 25% or $500 in cash or stable coins, then the remaining $1,500 will be distributed as follows. $450 each to low, 
high and medium risk investments and $150 to super high risk degen plays. I'll then use these numbers as a guide when researching and evaluating different investment opportunities in the crypto space. This might be across only a handful of projects or if I want to diversify further within each of these risk buckets, which will help stabilize my risk within each of these groups, then I'll continue to seek out different projects and opportunities over time. And remember, I'll always have some liquid cash handy in case there's a timely opportunity at any risk level. To continue the example, I'll put $450 in Coinbase in the form of Ether and will stake it for 4% APY as my low risk investment. I'll put $450 into yield nodes as my medium risk investment, which I expect to earn me anywhere between 5 and 10% per month. I'll put another $450 into Green Life Energy as my high risk investment because I'm bullish on the real world utility and future of the project and finally my remaining $150 will go to the pre-sale for the latest Zijin auto staking project that promises to earn me 1 million APY. Of course, this is just an example, so don't take it literally. With that said, remember your investment strategy and risk tolerance will always depend on your personal preference and situation. If you find yourself having a tough time sleeping at night because you're worried about your investments, you may be over leveraged and your risk tolerance may not be what you had thought. In this case, definitely scale back. How I evaluate projects will be the next video in this series, so stay tuned and definitely check it out once it's released. And that's all folks. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Here on Fire Hustle, I make a commitment to tell you everything you need to know about crypto in the shortest amount of time possible. As always, if you have any projects or topics you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments below. And remember, investing can be very risky and none of this is financial advice. I highly recommend that you do your own research before investing in crypto projects. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.